Good morning, alumni, and welcome to UC Davis Betty Irene Moore School of Nursing's Decade of Discovery Alumni Celebration. Thank you for joining us. My name is Sarah Mincy, and I'm the Director for Alumni Engagement at the School of Nursing. Although gathering in person is something that's long overdue, we're so grateful to have folks joining us from many different places. As you know, today's definitely not a webinar. Our goal is to celebrate this decade of discovery and give you plenty of time to catch up with friends, old and new. So let's get started. I see a lot of people with their cameras on. This is great. Uh, if you need a little hand, um, we'll walk you through some tips. Have you set your uh, grid view? I wanna walk you through that as well. So look in the upper right hand corner of your screen, mouse over the word view and select grid view. Everyone good? All right, I see uh, Dr. Haas driving. So nice to see you. I see Rain, I see Molly, I see Dr. Marie Garcia. This is awesome. All right, so you all know your Zoom etiquette. We're probably a little burnt out on it. In fact, um, your microphones will be muted throughout a lot of the program, but uh, we really want you to keep those cameras on because it's how we're recreating, I think, our sense of the Betty Erie Moore School of Nursing community. So raise your hand or type in the chat. Uh, Who's in California? Northern California, Bay Area. All right, Yuko, Suzanne, Conrad. Oh, this is awesome. Ah, oh, we've got folks in the Bay Area. Pamela, you made it. So glad you're here. Hi, Lori. Oh, this is wonderful. Reina, glad you're here. All right, so um, I want to see who's our farthest participant. Um, I think I heard that someone is um, on a wonderful island. Anyone in Hawaii? I, no, they, oh, yeah, there he is. Oh, <laughs> Rain, thank you for joining us. This is so cool. All right, is anyone here from outside the US? Hey, we've got someone in San Antonio. Hi, Sheridan, all the way from the East Coast. Oh, this is fantastic. All right, so we're gonna shift gears just a little bit and introduce you to our first speaker, Stephen Cavanaugh, who is the Dignity Health Dean's Chair for Nursing Leadership, as well as the Dean and Professor at the Betty Irene Moore School of Nursing. Steve leads the school's five graduate degree programs and the development of our new programs. He clo also closely collaborates with the UC Davis School of Medicine across disciplines within UC Davis Health and departments on the Davis campus. He's recognized for his expertise in healthcare workforce development and maximizing the use of advanced practice nurses in clinical practice. His research explores the understanding of innovation and the need for it within nursing education and clinical practice as the growing older adult population requires new technology solutions. It's my pleasure to welcome Dean Kavanaugh. Uh, thank you, Sarah, for that kind introduction. Hello and welcome, everybody. I am delighted to see so many people joining us today from all around the country. The World Health Organization deemed 2020 to be the year of the nurse, but in reality, the last 15 months should really be called the year of the healthcare professional. I have no doubt that you've all been stretched beyond your comfort zones and contributed in so many ways to safeguarding the health of our nation. And for that, I want to thank you. At the Betty Irene Moore School of Nursing, we too have responded to COVID challenges by quickly redesigning curriculum, delivering courses in online and hybrid ways, and working to develop critical placements for our students. I'm proud to say that the classes of 2020 and 2021 pre-licensed nursing, physician assistant, and family nurse practitioner students all graduate without delays. This is really an amazing uh, achievement from both our faculty and our staff. And our collaboration with the School of Medicine and the Medical Center has opened up new doors in a variety of clinical placements for our students. Today, however, we're here to thank and celebrate you for all the brilliant things you're doing to support and improve our school and the health of our communities. Just think, 
Ten years of the Betty Ari Moore School of Nursing have now more than 900 graduates. I'm also recognizing the nearly 1,800 graduates of our UC Davis School of Medicine Family Nurse Practitioner and Physician Assistant Programs. That's an amazing number. You lead and serve in every area of healthcare settings, in communities and in schools. And your contributions and of your time and your talent are at the very heart of being a UC Davis graduate. You are an essential part of this great school's history and its future. As students, you help define our programs. You help create a culture of philanthropy that continues today. And we recently celebrated the final co cohort of our Master of Science leadership students. And now we're preparing for a 2020 launch of our new Doctor of Nursing Practice Family Nurse Practitioner Program. I know we called on many of you for advice in shaping this degree. Thank you for your advice. You're essential for our uh, continued growth and success. And I want to take this opportunity to thank the many people who've contributed in shaping our future together. Many of you have provided counsel to me on the reaffirmation of our vision and mission statements. And the next exciting stage of our journey is being charted now for the development of a new strategic plan. There is much work to be done to shape the school's course over the next few years, and I know I can count on you. So what's in store for the next 90 minutes? Uh, we've got a fantastic lineup of alumni and special guests. There'll be lots of opportunities for you to catch up with friends, old and new. Uh, but first, we have a very special message from someone many of you know, Dean Emeritus Heather Young. As Betty Ari Moore School of Nursing's founding dean, Heather continues her scholarly work as professor and national director of the Betty Ari Moore Nursing Fellowship Program. Heather's an internationally respected nurse leader and also an Aggie. Uh, she's a mentor to so many, uh, but most of all, I count Heather to be a valued colleague, generous philanthropic partner, and a tireless supporter for our school. Please enjoy this warm welcome message from Dr. Young and stay tuned for the celebration ahead. Good morning. I'm so pleased to be able to welcome you today. It's wonderful that we can gather on this Saturday morning from my Zoom room to yours to pause, reflect and connect. As always, when I think of you, I'm grateful that we walked along the path together during your time at the Betty Irene Moore School of Nursing. And I'm so grateful to all, all of you and for all you do to make the world a better place. I've thought of you during this year, and I hope that you and yours are coming through this unprecedented experience. I know that many of you have been directly involved in supporting individuals, families, and community during this pandemic, giving your all and I'm so thankful that you're there with your expertise and your ability to lead, especially in a crisis. I'm grateful that among our alumni, we have such diverse and rich knowledge, skill, and passion. As a group, you make a difference in so many ways at so many levels, whether you're delivering competent and compassionate care, leading teams and organizations, developing programs, educating patients and family caregivers, and the next generation of nurses and other healthcare providers, promoting health in the community, or conducting research and changing policy. I've always been moved by your stories of why you came to the graduate school and why you wanted to make a difference through becoming more educated. Like many of you, I came to the Betty Irene Moore School of Nursing because of my passion for making a difference and my years of experience in systems that didn't work as well as they should. The systems weren't providing high quality care and services and promoting health equity, and I wanted to make a difference. And together, we form a critical mass of people who understand that what we do makes a difference, and we have the power to make the changes. I applaud all of you for everything that you're doing to, to enact our vision every day. Individuals, families, and communities are better because of how you care for them and how you lead in times of crisis, as well as every day. Thank you for your courage to lead. I remember our first welcoming ceremony a decade ago at the California Museum, where the auditorium was packed with the family and friends of our inaugural PhD and Master's in Leadership class, and over 100 community supporters who'd contributed to the formation of the school. 
I remember taking a deep breath as we all processed into the auditorium to mark the real beginning of the school, the day it came to life with our first students. In my opening speech, I talked about the image I had of Betty Irene Moore throwing a pebble into a beautiful still mountain lake. Her vision was that pebble and that we were the beginning of the first ripple around that pebble with our first class and that many ripples would follow as new classes joined and as each of you went out into the world having your influence on the people you care for, the students you teach, the research you conduct, the policy you change. Those ripples would continue to build momentum until they became waves, both through more of us joining together and through the sphere of influence that each of you has. And the ripples continue at such an impressive pace. Before long, we welcomed our first PA and MP students into our fold. This was such an exciting time because these were our first clinical degrees and we built a broader faculty prepared to teach these advanced clinicians. And we extended more broadly into the community as we developed learning sites for practice. Not too long after that, we welcomed our first MEPIN students. This was an exciting milestone because Betty Moore always wanted to grow the number of registered nurses with leadership and systems thinking skills who could transform practice. I was so thrilled to meet our first class and to see the diversity of background amongst our students coming from so many different disciplines and communities. Our next milestone was opening Betty Irene Moore Hall. It was such fun to imagine the environment that would make it possible to teach and learn in creative ways and to have a permanent address for the first time. We gathered with over a thousand people during the days we celebrated the opening of Betty Irene Moore Hall and we were so glad to see so many of you there. And now we have over 700 alumni, over 50 PhDs, 220 master's leaderships, 70 NPs, 260 PAs, and 150 MEPIN alumni, a true critical mass of forward-thinking professionals. And this brings me back to gratitude. I want to thank you for, for taking a chance on us. It took courage on your part to come to a school that was under development. We were building the car as we were careening down the freeway and your engagement and your feedback was so vital to us as we shaped and refined our programs. You played a role in making it all happen and enacting Betty Moore's vision for the school. And for that, I am deeply grateful. You continue to enact Betty's vision in the work you're doing now. And we're so proud of you and so thrilled that you're making the difference you make. You're part of a very special group of people courageous, visionary, willing to ask the hard questions and do the hard work to make this world a better place. You're part of our critical mass that will shape the future. You have the opportunities to make Betty's vision come alive in so many ways, in how you engage with your community, listening deeply to the voices of the people you serve, having the courage to challenge existing structures and processes that do not advance the best outcomes and bringing your creativity to the fore in designing new approaches and solutions. This past year has brought into sharp focus the cracks in our society and our systems that assure that not all people have equal access to opportunity and good health. A bright light is shining on structural and interpersonal racism, and we all have the obligation to reflect deeply on our role in this. Personally, our own attitudes and values and blind spots as well as how we can contribute to changing systems to improve health equity. The pandemic revealed weaknesses in our systems and it also revealed that systems can change very quickly and effectively when they have to. Adopting telehealth and online learning in a matter of weeks after years of resistance, for example. So our opportunity is to sustain positive change and accelerate the innovations that took root during the pandemic. You learned when you were with us how imaginative partnerships can lead to creative solutions. You have the skills and confidence to reach out to people who think differently about problems and solutions. And now is the time to do that even more. I'm so excited about the impact you have, and I'm confident that the ripples we started together are building to create the waves of change. Thank you for so much for being here together. I hope you enjoy your time be well, and I look forward to seeing you in person soon. Okay, welcome back everybody. 
So next up is our first networking break. I see a lot of you already have your cameras on. If you haven't yet turned your camera on, uh, this would be a great time to do that. You can also take a look at your display name and update it if you'd like to add your pronouns, degree program, or the year you graduated. To do that, just click on Participants in your Zoom window, find your name, click on the button that says More, and then from there, click on the option to rename. So stay with us. We're going to randomly assign you to your networking groups. You don't have to click a thing. You'll be back here in about six minutes, and I hope you enjoy. Hi everyone, how was the breakout room? My name is Goretti de Nava and I'm a 2016 graduate of the Master's Leadership Program. I am thrilled to be here and seeing some new and familiar faces. So thanks for being here. I hail from Modesto, California in the heart of the Central Valley. I'm an oncology clinical nurse educator for Sutter Health Memorial Medical Center. I have the honor and privilege of working with and training some of the most compassionate, hardworking nurses who serve the Central Valley. It's really great to see all of you here. Raise your hand or type in the chat if you're a Master's Leadership alumni. Now that 250 nurses have been through this incredible graduate education program over 10 years, it's pretty amazing to know the kinds of impacts we're having. I think for me, the greatest part of the program was the amazing conversion of brilliant minds, the wealth of experience, and the incredible diversity that made for such rich dialogue and lectures. We have a special message from MS Leadership alumnus Carter Todd, class of 2019, and the president and co-founder of the Capital City Black Nurses Association. Let's hear what Carter has to say about his school of nursing experience. My name is Carter Todd, and I'm a graduate of the Betty Irene Moore School of Nursing Master's in Leadership program from 2019. So excited to have the opportunity to come here and speak with you all about my experience and what drew me to Betty Irene Moore School of Nursing. Um, it, initially, I was a pediatric ICU nurse at UC Davis Medical Center, and I always knew about the School of Nursing across the way. I had known a couple of people who went through the program there. Um, had a colleague who was actually in the PhD program and it was nothing but good things. And it just it always it was piqued my curiosity is what were they doing over there that was so special? Um, um, immediately upon arriving on campus at Betty Irene, I was just blown away by the support and the love of the faculty. To this day, I, I'll never forget uh, Dr. Susan Adams. She came and talked to me the very first day on campus, and now we are still colleagues, and now I can actually say friends moving forward through the process. So it was an extremely um, transformative experience for myself. I know we're only there for 18 to 24 months, but really the connections, the growth, kind of the trajectory that that program uh, put on my career, my professional development, and just the lens with which I saw healthcare uh, being delivered here in the United States and the way that I see myself as a nurse is just really, really transformative. And I can't speak highly enough about the program is and all you will, you all know, right? We all went through the same experience. Um, and then we talk about starting the ripples or making waves and, you know, this past couple of years through the social unrest and, you know, the, the COVID-19 pandemic, nurses have been thrust to the forefront to make ripples and to lead change in this country um, inside of healthcare and outside. And you know the the lessons and the training that I received at Beta Irene Moore School of Nursing, it really did provide a platform and a foundation for me to be able to do that at a very high level. I've gone on to start a Capital City Black Nurses Association, which is a local chapter of National Black Nurses Association. We've been very fortunate to partner with you know regional, uh, statewide, and national nonprofits to to amplify our work. We have over 60 members here in the greater Sacramento area. Uh, we just actually did a, a, an amazing program where 
we uh, reached out to men in the barbershop and talked about their, their health care and, you know, getting in front of their disease processes. And that's actually an iteration of my thesis project, right? We have three years later, two, three years later, and I'm still doing the same work that started at Betty R.A. Moore School of Nursing. So just, I can't speak highly enough to the, the process, the journey. As I reflect on the sunset of the master's in leadership program at Betty R.A. Moore School of Nursing, I can't help but just feel really appreciative for the opportunity to be a part of that network of people that made it into the program and made it out of the program and are now influencing the community not just here in Sacramento or in California, but throughout the nation. I um, mean, we all know that we have that, that close tie and that bond of being through that program and, and becoming nurse leaders right there at Betty R.A. Moore School of Nursing. I'm really appreciative to be a part of those people that had the opportunity to do the program in that 10 years. And I'm really excited to see uh, the next phase of, of education that takes place at Betty Area Moore School of Nursing. And, and then I hope to see you all here in Sacramento. If you see me around, we're all alumnus or alumni and feel free to reach out, call me, uh, text me, and I would love to speak with you and collaborate. Thank you. Okay, welcome back everyone. Our alumni engagement team had an opportunity to chat with other graduates of the leadership and doctoral programs about their experiences. Here's what they had to say. I think uh, what I took away most from the master's program was a different way of looking at problems in terms of how we can find solutions to those problems. So I think where the school attracts a lot of its students are uh, we're all um, have a clinical background and, and we've all had something that may have frustrated us in our past experiences and we all joined the school to figure out what can we do about that so regardless of our profession whether we're a nurse psychologist a physician etc we all have the main goal of improving healthcare. and uh, even though we're called a school of nursing we're really a school of uh, interprofessionals who are dedicated to care we come to the realization that nursing is very broad and each of us have our own special interest and passions that we have in our individual areas. Uh, leadership positions or leaders do not need a title. And so that was kind of uh, talked about quite a bit. And over the years when I've taken on different roles and responsibilities, I find myself uh, sort of uh, uh, talking to others about the same exact thing. You know, I don't really care about a title. I care about, you know, what we can accomplish. The program has really opened up my eyes in terms of really focusing on not just the growth of an individual career, but rather how do we sustain that uh, through continuous success in the next generations. So and there are different ways to come about it, whether it's in the form of just at the bedside having to precept somebody, but you know, guide those who may have different challenges in their own special ways that may not be clinical or may not be how to be a nurse, but rather where are the next steps in life or in their careers. Now today, unfortunately, I don't make billions and dodge coins or, or you know, meme stock. The knowledge that I receive, I'm not gonna give it back to anybody, but it's in my head. So, um, so what best way to do it is, you know, if I can be afforded the opportunity to give back in some way or form, whether it's financially or otherwise, I would want to be part of that campaign. Uh, I can't find Oprah's number, so obviously I'm not going to be able to get Oprah to support this idea, but um, I was just hoping maybe that we could get, um, you know, just this idea that we all help each other and, and just like, you know, the more did. I love that uh, the Moore's vision was to address this need for uh, a really urgent need for uh, more nursing faculty so that we would have more nursing graduates who would represent the communities that they serve. I love the Family Caregiving uh, Institute. I love that we're actually uh, looking at how people live in their communities. We're looking at uh, the Central Valley as you know, very vulnerable population and what can be done to uh, support uh, people in their everyday lives. All right, how are you doing? Let's keep things moving. Time to stand up, stretch, shake it out and get ready for your next networking break. You'll again be randomly assigned, so hopefully you can meet more of your colleagues here today. Hang tight and here we go.
Hi, good morning. I'm Leah Morris. I'm a 2013 graduate of Family Nurse Practitioner and Physician Assistant Program, as well as the Master's Leadership Program. I'm really excited to be here co-hosting with Goretti and seeing all of you on the grid. I've seen Virginia, I see Jan, I see Rain, although he ran out to go see Oprah, I think. So um, we'll get him back, hopefully. Anyway, uh, while I've recently retired, I've enjoyed a wonderful career, starting in clinical nursing and then moving into health policy and population health, and then back to advanced clinical practice as an EdP graduate from UC Davis. This spring, I recently enjoyed volunteering for the School of Nursing strategic planning effort by participating in the work group for community engagement and partnerships. Our goal in that work group is to strengthen engagement and community to improve health and health equity. Please look for more on this strategic plan over the next few months for the School of Nursing. I think for me at the School of Nursing, the greatest part about the Cobra program was working with the faculty and the other students. I met mentors and friends who I cherish today and stay in touch with. It's very important to me. As an NP graduate who went through the School of Medicine program before I came over to the School of Nursing, it's been really wonderful to see the growth of all the school's clinical programs. In 2015, the School of Nursing's first master's degree prepared PAs and NPs graduated. Yay! And in 2017, the first group of pre-licensure nursing students graduated. Another yay! Today, the school's clinical programs are the largest segments of students and its graduates. I'm pleased to introduce our next video with NP and PA alumni who share their thoughts with Sarah and Lizzie about what the 10-year anniversary means to them. Enjoy. <laughs> look at the, um, the mission statement and the guiding principles, it's like, we fit perfectly. Starting ripples and making ways because that is exactly what the nurse practitioner and PA programs have been doing for decades, for almost 50 years now. I've been in practice for 25 years. Sounds like a big number and it is. I made a full circle from being a graduate to now joining the faculty as a clinical professor. And I don't think I could wish for another job. It is, it is uh, precisely the uh, climax of my career. Sometimes I just introduce myself as, I'm, first I'm a nurse, and then I'm a nurse practitioner and a physician assistant. I'm really thankful, and again, partly of the combination because in the PA world, you want, there's more clinical hours. And so I was thankful for the clinical hours. I just got hired on as a um, faculty, part-time faculty for a Fresno Pacific program. I'm a graduate. I mean, I've worked for UC Davis 10 years and I worked for CSU Fresno teaching there for 10 years because after our program ended at UC Davis here in Fresno, and I was a part-time teacher there. I wanted to still teach, so we kind of they, they they knew us, our program, the Fresno State Nurse Practitioner Program. So, so three of us faculty, Cricket Peroxide, Dorothy Frazier, and myself, all went over there to Fresno State. Oh, I go to Bay Area Moore School of Nursing. It's actually the PA program under the umbrella of the nursing school that's associated with medical school on the same campus. That's actually like a nursing school, but it's the PA school. It's a lot easier just to go, I go to UC Davis's PA program. Nobody around here really knew what nurse practitioners did. So not only was I a new nurse practitioner, but I had the opportunity of really educating our community, our doctors, our hospital on what we could do as nurse practitioners. I have precepted so many students and I feel like we have to give back to our profession. And that's what I really try to always do is, is uh, you know, give back and to do that I have to spend time precepting and so I, I do. I've really really enjoyed coming across pre-med students, pre-PA students, pre-nursing students or people who are in programs and coming alongside them and, and helping them kind of figure out their next step. And so I teach them to, to, uh, to learn and give with passion and I always do this to them in the classroom. 
with passion and do it with passion. If you don't do it with passion, it's not going to have the same value. One of my big focuses as a CEO of this hospital is really looking at, uh, you know, quality and safety of the patients that we serve in the community and making sure that we have access to care to all the different areas and growing our programs here at the hospital to make sure that we have that access. And I really learned that from UC Davis by your guys' approach on uh, access to care and how you are, you know, uh, being able to go out into different communities and, and educate and with the with the idea that those those providers will stay in that community and so that's really selfless honestly because you know you're putting all of that education and time and energy and money into training people that are going to be you know back into their own communities which is a really i think uh, the way things should be we've always had this this spirit of well why not curiosity that I think comes from, you know, from the top down and the bottom up. Students come in very curious, they're excited, they want to learn. And, you know, the faculty and the, the um, administration of the program, certainly, and I see this mirrored in the School of Nursing on whole, is very, very curious. It's like, okay, what, what else can we do? Let's, let's not just do it this way because it's the way we've always done it. Let's challenge ourselves. That you need to, continue to do what you're doing and we have to be innovative in the way that we're training and teaching and educating and and we need to train nurse practitioners that also have that mindset of giving back to their profession and to their community and serving. Because it seems like the model is going to grow and I mean it may even grow beyond nursing and PA, it may grow into other um, forms of healthcare. You know we're doing something that's Made, has major impact on the health and well-being of the population. We are changing lives. We are, you know, not just the lives of our patients, but the lives of our students, the lives of the people that they see. It feels like such an, uh, uh, that ripple, right? Back to the ripple, you know, make, creating ripples and making waves. You know, it's that ripple effect is huge. Hey everyone, wow, I don't know about you, but I really enjoyed seeing former and current faculty. I think Angie and Conrad are here today celebrating with us as well. Also great to see Virginia, and I agree, the ripple and changing lives is absolutely what happens at this school. The School of Nursing wouldn't be complete without a pre-licensure nursing program. Since 2017, almost 200 master's entry program in nursing students have graduated to become registered nurses. These new nurses are prepared, not just in clinical skills, but also importantly, they're prepared to be leaders in their workplaces, communities, and professions. Jenna Ricks is one of those graduates. You may have heard of her. She was recently in the news. As a new nurse, the last thing she expected while on her own maternity leave was to help deliver a baby in the UC Davis Health parking garage. Let's hear Jenna tell the story. Hi, my name is Jenna. I am a Methin class alumna of 2019. Recently, I had a baby uh, and my baby was readmitted five days later to the hospital into the NICU. And we had been there approximately five days from that point. And I could see that he was getting better. You know, I had been on, on disability and leave for like six months because I was a high risk pregnancy. So I was taken out of work. Um, and I was really feeling like, I don't know if I can continue to do this. I hear her say, I'm going to need a shoelace. And in my L and D brain, I knew that there is only really one thing that a shoelace is used and that's tying off the umbilical cord to cut it. And um, I jump in, I know at this point I have to get involved. I'm a labor and delivery nurse. This is my specialty, I need to get involved. So I run up to them and I say, are you having a baby? Have you had a baby? And they're like, yes. And the nurse looks up to me and she's like, are you a labor and delivery nurse? And I said, yes, I am. She's like, good, this is my worst nightmare. You're in charge now. <laughs> and so I made sure the baby was healthy and happy and mom wasn't bleeding out of control or anything. I controlled the situation. I could hear the sirens coming. Um, so the paramedics were on the way and I 
worked with the paramedics, got them into the hospital, waited until I knew she was in good hands, she was safe and had great care. And I said, goodbye, congratulations. And I really feel that UC Davis School of Nursing helped me get to that point. They built the foundational skills in me with the communication, leadership, teamwork, and critical thinking that I needed. And because of their simulation labs, I 100% felt confident and comfortable in a situation like that. We did many different skills in sim lab, and I feel that the tools that we use in there um, really gave me the foundation to be able to help this member of the community get through one of the craziest experiences of her life and my life too. Um, and it was just an awesome experience and I, I have to give credit to Davis for that. Wow, that's a great story and a wonderful graduate of the Betty Irene Moore School of Nursing. Okay, let's get ready for another quick stretch and time for you to meet more fellow alumni. The team here is ready to join you and hang tight. You'll be in your groups in just a moment. Welcome back everyone. How are you doing? We've heard from some master's leadership alumni, graduates from the nurse practitioner, physician assistant, and MEPIN programs. Now, it's my pleasure to introduce you to Charlie Dharma Sukrit. Charlie graduated from the doctoral program in 2019, and prior to that, he graduated from the leadership program in 2015. Amazing. He's what we call a member of the six-year club. Welcome, Charlie. Thanks, Goretti. Hi, everyone. It's so awesome to be part of today's celebration, especially as we are celebrating more than a decade since the Betty Irene Moore School of Nursing first opened its doors to its first students. As Gary mentioned, my name is Charlie Dharma Sukrit, and I'm a proud member of the Six Year Club. There are now quite a few of us who are part of this exclusive club, which encompasses first completing a two year Master of Science and Leadership program, and then completing the four year Doctor of Philosophy or PhD degree. I graduated from the MS Leadership Program in 2015, and finally the PhD degree in 2019. Now, you may be wondering what my thought process behind wanting to continue my master's journey was to earning my PhD. I started my journey at the School of Nursing wanting to become an educator, as I knew from prior experiences working with nursing students that I wanted to teach and to be involved in nursing education. I also knew coming into the school that I enjoyed working with the geriatric population, and as this population continues to increase, our healthcare system as a whole would be in dire need of new solutions and more nurses who have been trained to think differently about the status quo. I was intrigued by the school's core values of developing leadership, innovative solutions, and interpersonal collaboration. While earning my master's degree in developing innovative methods using simulation to better prepare nursing students for the changing needs of the inpatient setting as for my thesis, I took some of the most formative and frankly, most thought-provoking classes I have ever taken to this day. Nursing 201 with Dr. Joe Joseph taught me about our paradoxical healthcare system, which we spend increasingly high amounts of money with little outcome to show from it, with many of these issues stemming from the social determinants of health. I was so inspired by Dr. Joseph that I later completed a dissertation on her mentorship, examining the confluences of frailty, race, ethnicity, and surgical outcomes amongst geriatric orthopedic patients. My experiences confirmed that I wanted to be a leader in nursing education, in charge of innovative education programs that would encourage my learners to approach education differently with positive downstream effects on our patients. Today, we're here at this event, which has the theme, starting ripples and making waves. Through the investment that the school has made in me, I was able to transition from a bedside nurse who wondered about how I could improve healthcare on a greater level into my current role in charge of an innovative patient education and engagement initiative at the Department of Veteran Affairs. In full circle, I am also serving as the academic affiliation coordinator for the VA, ensuring that nursing students seeking to spend time with the VA receive a quality clinical or scholarly experience that exposes them to the many unique challenges that veterans face with respect to healthcare. I can wholeheartedly say that the education I earned at the UC Davis Betty Irene Moore School of Nursing was essential to preparing me for my current role, and I am continuing to make positive ways for students, nurses, and the patients we serve.
Hi. Wow, thanks so much to Charlie for sharing his experiences. As a six-year veteran of the School of Nursing, I think he's going to do much, much in the next six years and the six years and the six years beyond that. Okay, folks, we're coming to the close of our time here together. Let's take one more stretch, then head over to some breakout rooms. At the end of the breakouts, we'll bring you back one last time and be sure to stick around because you don't want to miss the special thank you message which this team has prepared. Welcome back, everyone. Thank you so much for being part of today's celebration. I want to thank our alumni co-host, Charlie Dharmasukrit, Goretti Damara, and Leah Morris, as well as the many contributors, both on screen and, as you can imagine, behind the screen that have made today such a wonderful success. We've achieved so much during our decade of discovery. UC Davis' 50-year history of preparing advanced nurse practitioner providers is our strong foundation. The, Betty and, uh, the Gordon and Betty Ironmore Foundation investment flourishes with a drive for interprofessional education and the determination to bring about bold system change, something we've heard so much about today. I'm deeply grateful for you, for all of our nursing and physician assistant alumni. Your unimaginative partners, our colleagues, our preceptors, our clinical instructors, and our volunteers. You inspire our students to follow your example through leadership, clinical excellence, community connections, and partnership. But we wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for Mrs. Betty Irene Moore, who believed in our diverse learning community here at UC Davis. The depth and breadth of our influence has grown enormously over the last 10 years. We are charting a course towards the next decade through development of a strategic plan built upon our values and our desire to engage our communities. We are determined to work to create diverse, equitable, and inclusive opportunities for all. And with our core values to guide us, we are committed to academic excellence, with a passion for social justice, and to transform healthcare and improve health for all. Thank you again for being so generous with your time and sharing your talent with our PA and nursing students. Your work is transforming our healthcare system. Here is where we conclude our gathering for today. I look forward to the prospect of meeting you at our next alumni meeting, I hope in person. I know I've enjoyed today enormously. I sincerely hope you have too. Thank you very much. I want to say thank you to all of my mentors over the decades that I was both a student and, and faculty uh, person at UC Davis. Happy 10th anniversary, <laughs> Betty Irene School of Nursing. Happy birthday, UC Davis. Without you, I would not be here. I am thankful to my Lord that you crossed my path and I crossed yours and now we have a union. I also want to thank all of my students. Every single student I have had, and there's been thousands uh, over the last 20 plus years. You know, I've learned something from each and every one of them and they certainly made my professional life richer and far more interesting because they were a part of it. Thank all those new graduates and you're going to have a great time getting a job and getting started in your career. It's going to be great. I just want to say thank you to UC Davis. I'm so proud of the School of Nursing. I'm so proud that you still reach out to all your alumni. Thank you for caring about not just your students that are there, but the past students that you've had in your programs. Realize that what we've give, been given from the school is truly a gift. And it's up to us now to pay it forward, whether it be through philanthropy or even in the normal work that we do as leaders, because that's what I feel that the Bay Area School of Nursing developed.